Here we're going to look at a more complicated case where we're trying to find the inverse of a parabola, which is not a one-to-one -one function. Now why this is a problem is because when you take its inverse, you get something that is not a function. So what we often have to do is try to restrict the domain so that rather than have it be all real numbers, as a parabola usually is, we want to put in a restriction. In this case, we'll put x greater than or equal to 4. Now, by doing this, we can limit how much of the parabola appears on the graph. Of course, the question is why x is greater than 4. And first of all, why is it a problem anyway? So to figure this out, we're going to need to actually find the inverse function. We'll do this algebraically by swapping x and y. And then we'll solve for y. So rearrange the equation. I have to square root both sides, and because of the square root property, we have to put a plus or minus in front of that square root. We rearrange this a little bit more, we have our inverse function. Now, if we make a graph of this inverse supposed function, it makes it something that sort of looks like a sideways parabola. Because it has a positive and a negative arm, do a quick little sketch of it here, we see what happens is that it actually ends up failing the vertical line test, which means it's not actually a function. It's just a relation. So our goal, by setting our restriction on the domain of the original function, let's see what happens on the graph. Our goal is to make it become a function when we invert it. What we'll do is we'll lose that bottom arm from our inverse function. And now we'll have something that is a function. This little problem we had before with the plus minus disappears because we don't have the plus and minus arms anymore. And if we plot this in, you see, there it is. Now it's not so much a sideways parabola, it's just the upper half. You see an orange there, that would have been the lower half, but we've restricted the original function, so that lower half no longer appears on the inverse. Again, we can see how an inverse function is a reflection over the line y equals x. It's in black there. So the red one's the original function. Now with this new domain restriction, the bluish purple one over there is the inverse function. And like I said, the black line is y equals x. So if we look at the domain and range of the inverse, it's actually just reversed from our original function. Right? Where x was greater than 4, y was greater than 3. Now x is greater than 3, and y is greater than 4. Once again, we see a little bit of swapping of the points where 4, 3 on the original turned into 3, 4 on the inverse.